My guest today is Moradura, also known as Peter Curran. That's right. Very pleased to have you along. Thank you for coming, here. Peter. And um, when I invited you to come for an interview today, I mentioned your passion. Um, you've been very passionate this last week or so, ever since the announcement of the, that the party would discuss membership of NATO yeah. at the October conference. What's got you exercised in particular? Well, it started a bit before they made the announcement, Stuart. Yeah, there was kind of warning signs, wasn't there? Yeah, and uh, the first thing that bothered me was the party at that time uh, were less than frank. They kept saying, well, we have no such plans, but if any resolution comes up from a member, clearly it will be discussed in the normal way. Mm. And I engaged in a number of Twitter exchanges with party members who were defending the party on the basis they have no such intention. There is no such plan. So, so that was the first thing that bothered me. Mm. I also have some reasonable media contacts who said to me, okay, what way are they, they going to do it? They're committed to it at the highest strategic level. And that means Angus Roberts and, and uh, Alex Salmon. Mm. So the first problem for me was best way I can put it is disingenuous that's on the part of the party about the issue. That's perhaps that could end up being the biggest issue rather than just the topic. If, yeah. it's, if, it's, if, it's, if it extends beyond NATO and nuclear weapons into other... Well, it's not the biggest issue, issue for me, but that's where it's... You know what I mean, but the fact yeah. that they're being disingenuous, I mean, that's part of what I feel, apart from having a similar opinion on the, on the issue, NATO and nuclear weapons, as you, I feel the that this disingenuineness, if that's spread around the whole, I mean, that could destroy their entire support. But what I think brought it about was the Glasgow Strathclyde University report, which canvassed a, a large number of people, those in the party, and it was a Professor Mitchell's report okay. on their views on NATO. And what he found was a mix of apathy and support and I think that gave uh, encouragement to those who were wanting to go down this route. Personally, I'm quite convinced I'm in a, a tiny minority on this. I expect the resolution to pass because either the majority are disinterested, uninterested, not disinterested, uninterested or apathetic, or for some reason they're being muzzled or muzzling themselves. Well, look, here's another thing I nearly posted yesterday, it occurred to me that what I'm looking at is a steady rightward drift. I would say, I mean, I think no bones about it, so I'm old fashioned lefty, but not lefty, I'm like, not a Trotsky head banging. Uh, well, not if you've been in the SDP. Uh, well, that, that, was a, that was an aberration. Okay, well, it, it was a, a brainstorm which lasted. But still, that was very middle of the road. Well, I was mean, when I was in industrial relations and fighting wars with unions day in and day out, and I the highest respect for responsible trade unionism, which most of it is, mm -hmm. but there was a nutcase element abroad. Are we talking about the times of uh, Derek Hatton and, and Militant and that Well, no, for me it was much closer to home. I mean, in the Newcastle breweries, which is where I was placed, uh, right. I won't attempt to go into it. Uh, they were litigious then and they're probably litigious since, but they had nothing to do with responsible trade unionism and the, the union. What happened was Jack Jones had let the genie out of the box by mm. passing power to the shop steward. And uh, anyway, that's... But was that either? Uh, well, yes, that would probably come up well out of the Derek Hatton era at that time. I didn't put a timing on Derek Hatton. I can't remember. I, I do remember. Myself, maybe, maybe. Yeah. militant. Yeah. Must have been. Well, militants have always been. Militant actually was never a problem for me. The, the, the trade unions I was dealing with uh, were more akin to an extreme right wing criminal conspiracy. Yeah, well, I, well, I, 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 I did remember, I mean, I was getting a Marxist education from at the time, an undergraduate education at the time, and I remember thinking that. It wasn't a left right continuum, it was a circle and the far right met the far right. left. That's right. It goes back to some old layer in the European Parliament where they were laid out in the horn 
and the extremes of the horn were closer to each other than they were to the south. That's still true. Right. There was a very influential book in the 60s, totally forgotten now by an American longshoreman, Eric Heffer. Not the Eric Heffer of the British trade mm -hmm. union movement. And it was called The True Believer. And it was a set like the essays of Montaigne, a series of aphorisms. And his central thesis was the true believer can be flipped like that. Mm. Uh, you know, well, that's an interesting point because I remember I, my dissertation at the moment. Sorry, click one more thing. <laughs> my, my, uh, my dissertation for my degree was about CND activists, and it was basically suggesting that there were certain kinds of people that were political activists and they simply took, went from a fashionable cause to another fashionable cause. I think there's a lot of truth in that. In my misfortune to know this story is unfashionable. Well, let's, well, let's focus on the issue that's certainly got you this question of NATO, not, not so much about how, the, how it's, be, it's, it's... We now know what the... the what the amendment, the proposal is. Yes. The proposition is. We, I mean, I nearly printed that off. You know, no, well, no, we both know what it is. Um, and you believe that it's going to pass without a problem and uh, yeah. that's over? And, how, and what are going to be the consequences for the nuclear question then? Well, you first of all got to look at what I believe to be the reasons for them doing what they're doing. Now, I know what the stated reasons are, and I think they're substantially uh, true. That an independent Scotland is has never said it would be an isolationist Scotland. Mm -hmm. It would be prepared to be a member of appropriate alliances, either on a permanent basis uh, or on an ad hoc basis. Okay. Uh, and you would say a small country had to have some concept of alliance. The alliance that is there, and the majority of uh, Scandinavian countries, and of course Great Britain and the key countries in Europe, is NATO. But NATO is constructed of 28 member countries, of which three are solidly nuclear. France, Britain, United and, States. Yeah. And then you've got more that have nuclear weapons on their soil. Well, not, not that many more. I, I couldn't enumerate the ones that are... Germany. Been, Germany it would certainly be a category. There is no democracy in NATO. In fact, it's not under any political control in terms of its key engagement decisions. For example, NATO, if NATO contemplated a major nuclear response, it would not either seek parliamentary or uh, any endorsement. It would be done on exactly the same basis as Bush and Blair entered the Iraq War. Blair went through a token parliamentary thing, but he was in the position of invading a less powerful country where there was no prospect of a retaliation. Mm. In a nuclear exchange, the, the military strate strategic heads of NATO would simply make the decision to go first. And NATO, no, the idea that the member countries can influence NATO in any significant way, they can express their views, they can take votes, Clearly 25 countries can outnumber three, but the three countries have a veto. They're exactly the same as the great powers of the United Nations. Mm -hmm. So any member of NATO, any member country, whatever their nuclear policy, whatever their hostility to, to nuclear, is facing the fact that a nuclear strike could be done in their name and there's probably all they could do about it. And that, I can see the, quite clearly the point of that. Mm. So that, that's point one. Now, the simple, I'm trying to avoid saying simplistic because you have to keep certain things simple in politics, especially if you're electorate to understand them. But the simple explanation we give this, the Scottish National Party is resolutely anti-nuclear. We will not expose nuclear weapons. We won't try to put it Scotland. And we will give the following deal on offer. Uh, we will remain a member or seek membership, however you define it, of NATO, providing Trident is removed from Scotland. And to the vast bulk of the membership, that means a magic wand will be waived. Because be NATO is desperate to have us in NATO and will happily make that concession and they'll be gone tomorrow. 
The reality is NATO only wants a Zim, and unfortunately Jim Sellers blew the whistle on why, because they regard Scotland as NATO's European aircraft carrier. Most unfortunate phrase when it comes to the heart of it. And it, it takes us back to the days of the Holy War. Absolutely. Now, if they want a Zim, they want a Zim because of our nuclear capacity. So I'm a negotiator. I spent my whole life in professional negotiation, both doing it and teaching it. So how do you see the negotiations going? Well, when you go into a negotiation, uh, one more thing you have to do. The first thing you have to do is prioritize your objectives. Now, I, I've got a fairly simple model that I, I've always used. Uh, the old model was one, two, three. That's my top, that's my second, that's my third. Mm -hmm. My model I call CID, which I developed with a colleague, Kerry Dwyer. Uh, and C stands for crucial, I stands for important, and D for desirable. The crucials are things you must have. Red lines. Uh, well, they're a red line at your exit point, because a negotiator specifies a level of settlement and a spectrum from the entry point in what he wants and the exit point, which is the minimum he will accept or pay. So if I'm buying a second-hand car from you, mm. my uh, crucial is that I must buy the car. Let's say I need it for a job. Must, I must get this car, go hell or high water. My entry point may be to say, I'll give you 4,000, and my exit point is very reluctantly, I'll settle for five. The other side, if they've done any rational preparation of an entry and exit point, and a deal is only possible if the exit points overlap. Mm -hmm. so and that, that, that defines that. the bargaining area. Now, I am totally convinced that the SNP's entry point, which they believe is completely unrealizable, is immediate uh, decommissioning of the Trident warheads, in other words, deactivating. Yes, I read somewhere that they'd be taking how long it takes for them to be taken off the ships, yeah, so down to Old Mast and for refurbishment, yeah, etc. Yeah, 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 very, very short time scale, mm. and uh, removal within what is agreed to be a feasible time scale by those of about two years. I believe their exit point is between eight to ten years that they would be nominally decommissioned, but they would remain in the Holy Law. And eight to ten years, it will be like the budget for the Scottish Parliament. It will be kicked into very long grass, and it will be 20 years. In so the why, would, never why, why do you believe that's their exit point? That's their exit point. Why is that? What's the benefit in over having such a, a long well, drawn out? A number of reasons which I can only speculate on here. I have no insider information on that. One is that they believe, and I think wrongly, that retaining membership of NATO will send a reassuring message to the undecided voters who are considering uh, independence or significantly devil max who are worried about not being under a nuclear umbrella. I'm not worried about not being under a, a defense umbrella, put mm -hmm. it that way. And I think they're wrong in that. I think there are people who feel that way, but I think if they make this concession, what in fact it will do is push people towards, if they make this concession in relation to all the others that come and say, the monarchy, why bother to leave or go for devil life? So I think that they won't lose their core support. I mean, I will vote for independence. If Alex Salmon came out and waved the Union Jack and sang God Save the Queen and said, I don't want independence, I would still vote for independence. Mm. I'm totally committed to that. So that, that's one rationale. The other rationale is they believe, and again I think they're wrong, that they will have a residual... Uh, obligation under treaty to provide safe haven for nuclear armed subs of the, the NATO fleet. That sounds quite, I'll, I'll, no, that's, that's a little odd, but you think that's under NATO obligation? Well, they have an obligation at the moment under NATO, as I understand it. But there's a specific treaty obligation providing to provide safe haven. So they've got that circle to square. 
because the defense policy has been so long in appearing and frankly is so rudimentary in any form that I've seen it in so far, and because they've never declared who their key defense experts are, uh, then I believe they're trying to cover gaping holes in what their strategy is for removing crime from the Holy Law and all that, that goes with it. A series of easy flag-waving assertions have been made, but they're, they're hard to deliver. There's no question about that. So I think they one, they think it will benefit them electorally. Secondly, I think they are trying to well, bluntly, I think they're trying to kick it into longer grass. They, they, I'm sure they are still in their hearts. I can't believe, for example, that say Nicola Sturgeon is not, or Bill Kent, people like that are not totally and utterly committed to a nuclear free Scotland. But I've, I'm going to say something here, and I'll probably regret saying it if I say it, leave it on. I worry about a party which retained a external consultancy for their key communication strategy, which is based in Nottingham and boasts of the fact that it numbers among its key clients peers of the realm.